everyone. Hey, everyone. <laughs> How about that? Hey, everyone. We just finished up with a crazy April. We had four workshops, tons of travel, and very little sleep. And hardly any days off. So after our last workshop in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, we found ourselves dangerously close to bourbon country. This time we decided we would take a little different approach and visit some of the lesser known distilleries. In just four days, we managed to visit 10 different distilleries, ride a dinner train, watch the Kentucky Derby in a bourbon bar in bourbon country. It was pretty epic. We're pretty good. Yeah, we got this vacation thing down. So these 10 distilleries took us between Lexington and Bardstown. We avoided Louisville because we knew that's where the derby was taking place and we wanted nothing of it. So here's a quick rundown of the 10 distilleries we visited. Number one, Town Branch Distillery and Brewery. While Town Branch is in the official Kentucky Bourbon Trail passport, it is probably the last one people end up going to because it is the furthest away. This place is unique because not only do they make bourbon and whiskey, they also make beer. And I love beer. Overall, their spirits were okay, and their beer was about average. You know, not the best brewery and distillery to go to, but not a bad place to start. Number two, Barrel House Distilling Company. Now, there are a few distilleries that actually have a small bar in addition to their distillery, and Barrel House is one of those places. This place was a pleasant surprise, because not only did they have their bourbon, they had two types of moonshine, rum and a vodka which the vodka was the surprise of the whole tasting. Bartenders are a very undervalued source of knowledge, especially when you're at a specific bourbon bar. Overall, Barrel House had great spirits and a great vibe to it, so I definitely recommend that one. Number three, Bluegrass Distillers. This is definitely a place I would describe as off the beaten path. When we pulled up, it was this tiny little building with just a door you went into. The cool thing here is that we got to talk to the guys who were actually kind of rushing to work, but they let us back there right in their workspace. They let us stick our hands in the mash. The small scale distillers are pretty unique because you can definitely tell there's a lot of pride that goes into the work they do and they're really excited to show it off to people. After hitting a few places in Lexington, we decided to head to Bardstown. Now on our way was one of our favorites, Four Roses. One reason we appreciate Four Roses so much is their upfront approach to talking about their past and how they used to be known as kind of the cheap bottom shelf college bourbon. Now that's all changed in the last decade or so when they started producing a higher quality product and rebuilding their brand name and reputation. Another pro travel tip is that most of these tours and tastings are going to cost you anywhere between $10 and $20. But at Four Roses, you can get a $5 tasting where they guide you through all their bourbons and you get to keep the glass. Number five, Limestone Branch Distillery. It's rare that Kendrick and I agree, but in this case, we agree that this was probably one of the best distilleries on our tour. Not only did they have a free tasting, they had really good spirits, and they donate a lot of their profits to the national parks, which is kind of what we're all about. It's very rare when you go on distillery tours that you get to meet the actual people who are creating these bourbons and spirits. But at Limestone Brands, we were fortunate enough to meet Stephen Bean. And he signed the two bottles we decided to buy there. Even though Kendrick and I have been together every single day for like a year and a half now, we've gone on like three dates. So when I heard about this cool thing called a Kentucky dinner train, I made this guy take me out. Lucky me. It's not often that we do touristy things, but a two hour train ride through the Jim Beam Distillery property that included a big prime rib, dessert, you know, a good choice of bourbon and wine was the perfect opportunity for a date night. If you're ever in the Bardstown area, I definitely recommend taking one of these rides. Number six, the Willet Distillery. Our tasting at Willet stands out because we really got to know the person leading our tasting, Jim, a retired photography teacher, and it just kind of made it all the more personal. So the tasting at Willet is reasonably priced at free. The Willet four-year rye is amazing, but also all sold out. So we bought the next best thing, which is their flagship pot still reserve. Number seven, the Barton 1792 Distillery. 
Now, once you've done one distillery tour, you're pretty much prepared to see them all. Barton is a little bit different. This tour goes into a lot more detail, and they take you around the manufacturing area to let you see how bourbon is really produced. So if you're going to do any of the distillery tours, this is one we recommend. And it's free. Number eight, Bardstown Bourbon Company. I was lucky enough to visit Bardstown Bourbon Company two years ago when they began construction on the building. I was really excited to go back two years later to finally find out what they were producing. However, it's still under construction. Guess we'll have to wait. Next trip. Number nine, Lux Row Distillery. We were really excited when we found Lux Row on Google Maps and we looked at their website and it looked like they had some really great whiskeys. One of the most disheartening things with distillery tours is when you show up, all of the tours are booked in advance and they don't offer any tastings. We left Lux Row without tasting their bourbon or seeing the distillery. Wah, wah. And finally, that brings us to number 10, the Jim Beam Distillery. Even though Jim Beam is a larger distillery and doesn't fit in with our off the beaten path distillery theme of this trip, we wanted to see it anyway. One reason for that is the Jim Beam Distillery is one of the few distilleries where you can show up without a tour reservation or anything like that and you can purchase drinks. They also have a really diverse product line with everything from their Jim Beam products to Booker's to Knob Creek. It's pretty great. As if visiting 10 distilleries in four days weren't enough, we also got to watch the Kentucky Derby in Kentucky from a bourbon bar in the bourbon capital of the world. Now, if that's not Kentucky, I don't know what is. It's probably not that Kentucky. I know this isn't the type of video blog we usually put out, but it's important to remember that even when you're working really hard, you need to take a vacation every now and then. All work and no play makes Kendrick a dull boy. So here's to remembering to stop and smell the bourbon. Love and light. From a barbin burr. Barbin burr? <laughs> See what I have to work with? I'm gonna cry, that was hilarious.